Hello, beautiful creative people. Welcome to How to Art Journal. I'm your creative tour guide, Kyla Givehand. In this episode, I chat with artist and illustrator Nicole Piar about being a full-time artist and entrepreneur, the power of quieting the inner critic, and the importance of taking the road less traveled. Nicole is a soul-centered artist who uses her imagination, dreams, and intuition to travel into the depths and bring back what she sees. She uses art and storytelling to create a bridge between her inner world and ours. She happily resides at the intersection of creativity and healing. Nicole is the visionary writer and illustrator of the award-winning Spirit Cats Inspirational Deck. It's a 48-card deck designed to help you strengthen your intuition. I am in complete awe of Nicole's art, her ability to manage so many creative projects, and the way she straddles both worlds of art and business beautifully. Her art has a unique quality that I like to describe as playful, spiritual, and magical, all wrapped in a blanket of kindness and love. Nicole has designed for multiple industries and has seen her art in stores like Barnes & Noble, Pier 1, Macy's, World Market, and definitely one of our favorites, Michael's Arts & Crafts. She really is the best of both worlds. So grab a cup of something comforting, pull up a chair, and listen in as Nicole shares her story, some of her art, and lots of inspiration for every artist at every level. All right, Nicole, thank you so much for joining me. I can't even tell you how, well, you kind of know at the beginning of this video, we're like having a little chat session and I'm just really giddy and energetic and super excited to talk to you about your art process, about your creative life, um, and definitely about this amazing Oracle deck, inspirational deck that you've created and put into the world. So we're going to talk about all those things. So sit back and relax, grab your cup of tea, grab your water, and just pretend like you're in our living room hanging out with us because that's what this is going to feel like, I hope. (laughs) Oh, thank you so much for joining. Thank you. I'm so happy to be here. (laughs) I'm up for the cozy tea time chat. (laughs) Awesome. Um, Well, we're going to talk, let's talk art stuff. So I want to start with Um, So you guys, if you watched the beginning of the video, you saw some of Nicole's artwork and you see that it has this very, what I call um, ethereal, you know, it's very spirit-like. There's lots of that energy in it, um, which is what I love about her work. And she's going to probably share something later that, um, and if not, I'll ask her about it if she doesn't just bring it up automatically about uh, another sort of creative process that she does with her art where she works with people one-on-one. Um, but Nicole, talk a little bit about just your creative life. What is your creative life like and what, um, what is, what is your day-to-day look like as a full-time working artist? Yeah. (laughs) Well, I, I mean, intuition and, um, sort of connecting to spirit and channeling is like a very important part of my creative Mm -hmm. process. So I would say it really, like, things really like set the tone for the rest of the day in the morning where I always do um, usually morning meditation of some, I have like a whole bunch of different varieties of meditations that I guide myself in. (laughs) Um, But I've had a meditation practice for a long time and that really helps me to like drop in and connect and um, I'll do a couple like offerings with, you know, some incense and I just like to create that like for me, the art practice and even the business of around the art, it's all part of this like sacred um, practice for me. So I try to create that container right from the beginning of my day. Even if I'm working on like logistical stuff that day, I still do that to kind of, you know, dive into it. Um, And then in terms of my actual like art making, it can really vary. Like I, um, some of the stuff I do is like, completely intuitive and I literally have no idea what I'm going to paint when I paint. I just like love watching, I do mostly watercolor, so I love watching like the water and the paint kind of like flowing together and making interesting shapes and it's, you know, you can't fully control watercolor and that's Mm -hmm. sort of what I like about it, like that balance between not fully being able to control it and seeing the surprises and then kind of like guiding that into something. 
And then some things I do, I like more envision and I'll sketch and, um, you know, maybe I'll do it like a, a meditation and have like a, a vision of something mm-hmm. and then I'll sketch and like pull pieces together and find inspiration. Um, and then after a couple of sketches, I'll like transfer a sketch into watercolor paper and then paint that. So that's like a very, a much more like slower process. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, if I, if I need a little like quick art break, like I'll just take out my, my ink and just kind of doodle and meander. <laughs> That's like my quick fix. Like, <laughs> <on the table. laughs> like <laughs> and yeah. the corners and things. I have my like sketchbook as well, but yeah, that's sort of the, I don't have much time, but I need something. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. It's almost like it can be a mental break too, because some of the work, like when I look at your artwork, it's so <clears throat> Intricate is, is a word that comes to mind, but I don't know if that's the uh, complex, but it looks some, like when you look at it at first glance, you could just say, oh, it's a cat on a pet, you know, but if you stop and you sit with it for a second, you're like, oh, holy moly, there's more going on on this page, right? There's more actually happening here. So I feel like there's, it, it has to, it has to be um Draining isn't the right word either because draining feels like a negative connotation, but it has to be mentally taxing in some ways and you need that sort of space to just doodle with some ink and just have something really simple (laughs) Um, because your artwork has that kind of what I would think just it, it feels so much like you that I can't imagine you're not being like your energy isn't being somehow pushed into the art. Um, for sure, I, I find like the like the most sort of, especially because most of what I do is, like, is for my imagination, like, I might use some references to help me, but I'm never really, like, even, I know how to do life drawing and things like that and life painting, but I'm not, that's not the, the look that I'm, like, going from trying to capture something that's in my imagination, and so the, some of the most challenging parts, especially on, like, some of the more complex, like, pieces is, um, like really trying to figure out what it is I'm even seeing in my mind that I want to translate. Like a lot of people will say like, oh, like I have what's in my mind and it doesn't look like what's on the paper. And I find that usually it's because we're filling in a lot of gaps of like what we think is there, like in our mind, but we don't really see it clearly. (laughs) Like we're like, we have a feeling, but we're not like seeing it clearly. And so there's that beginning part of like really just like diving in and trying to see it as clear as possible, like what it is. Um, And then the process itself, like it evolves. It's never going to be, you know, there's no like replicating that. It like becomes its own thing. But like that part is probably the most, um, I would say, taxing. And then once I have like that sort of locked out or like felt out then it's like more fun like it's like adding more little details and little expressions and um it feels more relaxing I'm not like ah (laughs) (laughs) but but that's interesting you say that because immediately I think yes I see things in my head like I want them like I want to be able to draw it and I want to be able to recreate that but something holds me back like something keeps me from taking what's in my imagination and actually making an image on the page. So what kind of tools or strategies or things do you do to strengthen that, to to make yourself able to actually not try to fill in the gaps, but for the gaps to actually fill themselves in, I guess, for. Yeah, yeah. Um, Well, I use sketching to kind of work things out um, rather than just trying to go straight to paint because especially with watercolor, like it's like, you can't really go back. Like, there's no, like, undo. <laughs> so, so I use sketching to kind of play with it. And I start, like, really, like, if people saw my very first sketches, like, they're basically completely unintelligible to anybody. Like, they're not, like, this beautiful sketchbook thing. No, it's, like, a scribble, like, trying to figure out where things are going to go. Like, it's kind of more like a problem-solving part. Mm. Um, and then <clears throat> color is another really big part of it. And, like, Like, I really love forests, so a lot of times I'll try to, like, paint things that are in the forest, which is kind of a complicated thing to do, but, like, I'm, I grew up in a forest. I love, like, that feeling of, like, 
traveling through the forest and the sort of metaphor, you know, like in, in the, your own mind or your consciousness, like this journey through and sometimes feeling like you don't know where you are. So I love that, but it's complicated sometimes to paint. And mm -hmm. so like looking at, you know, pictures of forests or either other paintings and seeing, oh, how did they handle like this, like, you know, the lighting or is what is the foreground lighter than the trees? Is the, mm -hmm. is the um, trees lighter or darker than the background? I actually have this one, like, a, since it's in the forest. Yeah. This was one that I really, is from my imagination, but I obviously thought it out. And so this one I really had to think, like, is the, are the trees going to be lighter than the background mm -hmm. um, or the other way around? Like, are the trees going to be silhouettes? And they create different feelings. So it's, like, trying to figure out, like, um, the tone of things, like the light to dark mm -hmm. um, before is helpful. And, and like your lighting and I, I like will pick other photographs or paintings that have like lighting that I like and they can be something totally different but that helps me visualize it like it yeah. doesn't have to be another like forest but if there's oh they really love these colors like it can help me like visualize what I'm going for <laughs> yeah. no and you do it beautifully because even as I like look through the cards there are I never noticed that about your work like I I think subliminally I see it but I wouldn't have picked it out myself like there are lots of forest scenes <laughs> but there yeah. but each one is different like none of them are like the same forest they're all <laughs> very, very different and I love that about them just looking at that piece that you showed us, even like the lighting in that, and the, um, it's just, to me, it's magical what you're able to do with watercolor, because it is, you're right, it's very unforgiving, it's not, it's not very, you know, you can erase it, kind of, but you can't undo, like, you can't yeah. <laughs> say, oh, you know what, I'm gonna start, yeah, unless you just start over completely, right, so. Yeah, yeah new, new piece of paper, <laughs> yeah, it's, it is like that, for sure, like, it doesn't quite, yeah, um, but, yeah, I mean, I think that it's it's like an ongoing process. Like the lighting is something that I felt really drawn, like lighting and forests were two things that I felt really drawn to being able to include because they have a lot of meaning to me. Right. And when, you know, I was starting with that feeling, my skills weren't really able to match that. But I knew that I really wanted to do that. So I started like trying. And like, I even like did, you know, a copy of a painting of these two people like in the forest to just like try to understand like, how do you make it feel like you're in the forest with all, because it seems like chaos, like there's all these trees and branches and do you see the tops of the trees or what? Like, I was like, what, how do you do it? And lighting too, like looking at how other people handled it and trying to like practice some of that. Mm -hmm. So but every time I sort of like feel like I, I'm getting something I'm like oh there's a, there's like the next thing that I'm kind of intrigued with like learning more <laughs> so it's always kind of pulling me ahead which is yeah. <laughs> pulling me forward <laughs> I love it because that that does keep the mind and I'm happy that you're saying that you look at photos and you take inspiration from other places because I think sometimes people think to be a real artist you can never look at anybody else's work you only create from and I'm like that that doesn't actually make sense um, because we're inspired by so many different things and informed by so many different things for sure for yeah. sure are you are you classically formally trained in art yeah I went to um, I went to um, uh, I got an art major, like a fine art major, and I did study painting. Mm -hmm. um, but it's so funny because it's like, even that, like I feel like I, when I was out of school, I mean, I learned so much in school, but I felt like I still didn't, there's, there's always like this feeling of like, oh, there's all these like missing pieces. And the more that you like, you're, you realize where you want to head, mm -hmm. you have to like go and find those missing pieces, like the, the gaps in your knowledge, the gaps in your mm -hmm. skill. Um, and so even though I, you know, went to the, those like four years of college, I took so many classes after that, yeah. um, both in person, like at other art schools, mm -hmm. uh, and like online, like it's like, cause I'm like, oh, there's, and I still do, even though I mean, I've been working as a professional illustrator and artist for a long time, but I'm still like, oh, I really need to like learn how to do that. Like, yeah. how do I get this right? Or for this, you know, thing, and I'll just... Um, yeah, I love learning. So. Yes, same here. I do the I same thing. And I'm like, I'm like, <laughs> like, I need to take another book art class. And my husband's like, really? Because you've made like hundreds of books, all very different from each other. Like, 
you know, do you need another? I'm like, <laughs> do I got, I don't think I know that technique. I, there's yeah. something different, right? There's, there's always more to learn. And I mean, that's one of the exciting things about like creating art is that it's like, it's a, you don't really like hit this point of, you know, just like you're done, you've like mastered it. <laughs> and exactly. that's kind of exciting. You know, so. yeah. And he loves that. He's, he's so supportive with my like art. And he's like, okay, well, if you think you need it, let's, let's, happen. let's make it happen. Let's <laughs> Um, because he he gets that like as a teacher he's like yeah the lifelong learning thing he was like I, I think we, we both get that so yeah and, yeah um, mom got it <laughs> so t so do you have a sketchbook that we could see like what a couple pages yeah. like what are your what does your sketchbook look like and I'm gonna yeah, put you, show you, so show you a current sketchbook um so usually it's like here's my current sketchbook so this is just um let me move this out of the way. This is just like a moleskin. Mm -hmm. But yeah, usually I'll just like take, uh, these are my like favorite pens. This mm -hmm. is bad letter. Like I used to use the Micron ones and then I discovered these and they're like so smooth. So let's see, like I'll just kind of draw little things that I'm inspired by or like a lot of times I don't even know what the heck I'm going to draw. Like I'll just start like doing <laughs> stuff. Yeah. But like lots of characters or like like more forests with different mm -hmm. kinds of these little little people. Like sometimes I like drawing little people. I don't know if they're owls. Beautiful. Owls. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I love it. So, yeah. so as, as I'm looking at that, I'm you know, the first thing that comes to mind obviously for me is is that how the ones you kind of flip through there, that's that that book. Is it six months of work sketching? Is it, you know? You know, I don't even really know. Like, I kind of just like go, I actually have more than what, I'm very like disorganized. <laughs> I'm like, didn't put dates and usually I have, like I have another book too going and I don't like always, like at the beginning of this book, it's actually like all, writing so I was like writing stories uh -huh. so <laughs> like it's like definitely I have my other sketch with this going it probably has a variety of sketches from like now all the way back to like five years ago and then I have this one I, I think I have like one more so I, I don't know and then some of them I've done on like just loose paper mm -hmm. so I'm not like super like creating the perfect sketchbook and you know, and a lot of my sketches that I use for paintings are like, I don't even really save those. Like I just use them, I use them more as like tools and less mm -hmm. as like, like the black, the, the ink sketches are more for just like free imagination, like play. Yeah. But my pencil sketches are usually like, I'm trying to work something out, like figure something out and like figure out composition or, um, like expression or what a character is going to look like. Yeah. Um, yeah, it sort of, it sort of varies, but my paintings usually I do on, um, watercolor paper, like on a block, a watercolor yeah. block. So I don't have to like stretch it myself. <laughs> That's perfect. Um, you definitely have a distinct style. Like even looking through your sketchbook, I see you there. Like if somebody just handed me that and you were nowhere around, I would say this looks a lot like Nicole PR. Like whose book is this? Because it looks like Nicole's, right? So what do you think attributes that? Like how do you think you developed a style that is so uniquely you, um, right? What, what kind of things do you think you've done to cultivate that in your art? Yeah. Well, I, th I think it's interesting. I think w one part of it is I think that, th that everyone has their mark, like everyone has this innate flavor or style to the way that they're naturally drawn to create or draw. Mm -hmm. But then the other side of that coin is that as artists, we like to experiment and try different things and sometimes, you know, um, maybe like emulate someone else's style to like learn from something. Mm -hmm. um, and so, and you have, you might have the skills to do a lot of different types of things. Um, and I think my process of like finding, finding my style was really a process of, I would say like self-acceptance and self-love. Like it was, it was like taking away um, like preconceived notions that I might have about, oh, like this is, 
um, this art, you know, this type of art might be more successful in this market or to these people, or um, like this might be perceived as like, you know, more prestigious. Because in art school, like, there's some baggage from art school with that. And then working professionally in illustration is like trends and trying to fit into trends. So both of those things, it's like being able to kind of set it aside and just really invite the part of you that you're like not letting fully in for whatever reason, like for so usually some like form of self judgment or feeling like people aren't going to understand it or won't relate to it. And so it's like this sort of like self acceptance, self love and kind of going deeper. Like when you see that part of you, that like vulnerable part of you, that's like peeking out, like you're, you go a little bit further in that direction. And even if it doesn't like look like what's already out there, like what you think is like good, <laughs> like you just like keep going. <laughs> I love that. What do you think is good? Um, yeah. <laughs> well, that's actually really good advice. Cause I think for a lot of people, they come to their art journal or their sketchbook as a way to figure out what their style is, who they are as an artist. But then I think there's some people who already kind of know and they go to their art journal to just push themselves further or they use it as a way to experiment with new mediums or to try it, right? So everybody's kind of using their journals and their art journals and their sketchbooks a little bit differently. But what I, what I find to be sort of universal, I guess, is that it, it somehow is like this magical place where you can remove all like concern about trends or what's right or what does the customer want or the person buying this what are they going to want me to make right you can allow yourself to just be free and what's coming up you can rely a little more on your imagination i think yeah yeah i think that that's key is like yeah it's like you're drawing the sacred circle and you're like okay i'm going in i'm not gonna let this other these other voices like you know come in and 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 distract me or pull me away from like what my heart is calling me towards. So, um, yes, yeah. what <laughs> calling me towards. You guys hear that? Listen, listen, listen. What your heart's calling you towards? Like that's such a big piece. And I think also um, letting go of this idea that it, you know things have to be perfect in your sketchbook in your art journal. Like it really is your space and your place um, to to not have to deal with perfectionistic tendencies or society or expectations or any of that so um i'm wondering what kind of advice you know let me let me go back and say this i have a lot of people who i think you might be the first person that i've specifically asked the question are you formally trained and that's a new question that i'm adding for 2017 for all my interviewees because i think it's important for listeners to know whether a person is formally trained or self-taught, if that's even a thing. I don't know if that's really a thing because we all learn from, from different places. You're still probably learning from people. <laughs> yeah, right? I mean, we watch YouTube videos. You just learn something, right? So you're not, uh, self-taught is kind of tricky. Um, but whether you went to school and got a degree in art or not, I think it's important for people to know that even in that scenario, there's still the questioning and there's still the curiosity and there's still the imagination and they're still wanting that space to be free. And so I'm saying all of that to say, I deal with a lot of kids and a lot of kids who, you know, I volunteer at schools and I've taught, I taught for a long time. And so I come into contact with kids in various ways now. Um, and it breaks my heart when some of them will say, well, I, what I really want to do is be an artist, but I don't think I can make money doing that. Or, you know, they'll show me these amazing sketches that they've done, just like doodled on the side of their notes for class or, you know, on the cover of their binder or whatever. And it just, I'm like, whoa, this is awesome. You've got some real talent. And it gives me like, really? That's just, you know, art just is devalued a lot in our educational system. So I'm, I'm coming at this a really long way, but to say to you, what would you say if you had a room full of kids in front of you who were all like thinking about this idea of art and making art and like what kind of advice would you have for those who, who think they might want to pursue art as a career or maybe they don't know yet, but they have some sort of inclination towards it? 
Well, I would definitely, like, this is funny because I, I mean, people said that to me. <laughs> like, it's not like I haven't heard those words. Right, yeah. I definitely have some memories of that when I was mm-hmm. in high school and think, you know, like art and writing were my most favorite things. And, you know, I was thinking of moving in that direction. Mm-hmm. And I mean, I think that it's like, if you, if you really have that calling inside of you, mm-hmm. it's not going to just go away. Like, even if you, there's been times in my life where I haven't been creating as much art mm-hmm. and when I'm not doing it, it, there's like kind of this like restless ache that you just know that you're not fully experiencing what you're meant to experience here. Like there's something calling to you and it's, I find not doing it to be like, even though there's a lot of challenge, there's fears that you confront with actually making art, um, you know, it's like very vulnerable experience, like putting it out into the world and, and then making money from it and, you know, connecting your livelihood through it, to it as well. Mm-hmm. It can be a vulnerable experience, but the pain of not doing it is so much greater. Um, like it's kind of like feeling that constrained, like you're limiting yourself before you even give yourself a chance to see what is possible, you know, so that, yeah, like, I mean, I would say stay with it, experiment, um, keep evolving, like keep learning more, like school isn't the end all, like you, what you learn in school is like the beginning, and, and then you, you reach out for like what you need to create what you want, Um, and there'll be a lot of people who will give you sort of parameters of like what they think you need to do to succeed or like you know and it's it's not so black and white as that it's like the art path is more of a winding path and it's like forging your own way and making your own choices um so I say like you know you have to have a bit of a kind of sort of like adventurous spirit (laughs) I was thinking the same thing like you kind of gotta be adventurous for yeah you have to be but for for me that's like why it's exciting too it's like not like prescribed like there's not like one way to go there's all these different possibilities and you can keep like turning and evolving and changing so it's it can be really rich and interesting continually and then yeah it's just it's I, I never, ever regret it. <laughs> like, I never regret Like, I just know that, like, I, I can't even imagine. Actually, look, this is funny. So when I went to school, it was, um, when I was in college, it was uh, a liberal arts co- college. It's not, wasn't an arts, uh, art college. Mm-hmm. And the way I became an art major was because I could not bear the thought of not having an art class like at least one or two art classes on my schedule every semester from my first semester freshman year so we <laughs> like like I just couldn't like because like, I knew it was a very you know challenging school and I knew that if I didn't have it on the schedule I wouldn't have time to do it and yeah. being that in myself that I didn't want to let it go even for whatever that is like what is a semester three or four months or something like that I couldn't even let it go for that long um, you know, it was said something to me. <laughs> like, that's like, you yeah. really <laughs> will feel the loss, you know? <laughs> that's, that's actually very powerful to say, I can't go that long without it. Like, it's this, because even it goes back to what you said, you'll all, you'll keep coming back to it. You'll be pulled at, towards that thing, or it'll be tugging at you forever, right? Yes, um, yeah. It's better to, like, explore it and really go down that path and then see what it is. Yeah. And there's always room to make like new decisions. So if it's like, you know, maybe like you start out as a, you know, painting and drawing, but then you really like find that what you really love is like creating like light installations or, you know, something totally different. It's like, there's room for that. Like it doesn't have to be, you don't have to know what the end is going to be when you start. <laughs> I love that. Oh, that is such, that's so, those are beautiful words. You don't have to know what the end is going to be when you start. You just have yes. to start. You just have yeah. to start. Um, I, I also love that you've given us this image of a winding road of, of art and the life of an artist kind of being that winding road um, because it is the idea of there's the straight path to get to something. And I feel like when we do that, when there's a straight path to get to something, we ignore everything over here because we're just 
on this straight path. But when you've got this winding road, you're being forced to kind of go and all these, you know, look <laughs> over here, over here, right? You've been forced to see a bigger picture, to see a wider um, sort of expanse of things. Um, yes. So thank you for that. Thank you for that metaphor and that image in my mind. It will, it'll, it'll stick with me for a while because um, I, I like that a lot. <laughs> so let's talk a little bit about your art specifically, because there's, you know, one of the reasons I really wanted to talk to you and interview you is because your art, aside from the fact that you have a very unique style, it's the process that of you creating, you know, the deck. And so I'm going to talk a little bit, you know, for those of you watching and maybe you're new to Nicole, you've not experienced her or her art yet. She is the creator. Um, she did all the artwork, all the writing, everything for the Spirit Cats inspirational deck. And it's a set of 48 cards, um, and each card has a different cat on the front. And on the back, there's a word that goes with that cat. And it's almost like a, I, I think of it as, I, I, when I use this deck for my own journaling, I use it as my affirmation or my mantra or the thing to kind of hold in my heart and mind for that day if I'm pulling one card for the day or something. But each cat has a name. And I love that. I love that they are these characters. They are these, um, they, they have their own personalities and energy. I mean, it's just, this deck is so beautiful. So I want to talk about, I, I feel like I kind of know a little piece of it about how each card sort of came to be in the world, each cat sort of came to be in the world because it wasn't just a, oh, I'm going to sit down and draw 48 cats today, right? It didn't, that, that's not, <laughs> that that's wasn't exactly not how it went. <laughs> so talk a little bit about that process of bringing, bringing this deck into the world, what that was like for you. Sure. So um, basically I had, I was um, uh, doing a lot of client illustration work, which was like much more regimented and I wanted to have like, time every day to just be like very free form, like nothing, like no plan, nothing, just intuitive paint, who knows, it could be abstract, it could turn into something. I like literally, it didn't even, I didn't even have to finish something. I just had to like put some paint down for 10 minutes every day. Like, and sometimes like 10 minutes, like I would be like, oh, I really, really don't feel like doing any more art today. Like, but like, I would just like sit and like 10 minutes, a so little bell would go off. I'm like, I'm out of here, you know? And then other days it would be like, I would just really di like dive in. And I'm like, oh, I'm so glad I started. And, you know, it would be like hours later and I would still be painting. So it kind of varied. But in that process, um some cats started popping up like here and there not every day but like they started you know every once in a while there was this kind of like magical sort of fantastical cat that would appear and I you know my friend my best friend saw them and was like I am so curious about these cats and I'm like I know like I like I hadn't really painted cats too much before that even though I love them mm -hmm. and um so I decided to do a project called Month of Cats, where I painted a cat every day for 30 days. Mm -hmm. And this was just what I, a personal, like, passion project, basically. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I, um, as I was doing that, like, it's almost like the more, this is one of the things I love about art, it's like the more you dip into it, like, the more it becomes its own thing. Like, it just sort of, like, this whole world kind of opens up in that creative space and it goes like way beyond it feels like it starts going beyond you and you're just like peeking it <laughs> you know yeah. and that's what I felt with the cats like they started you know coming through with like names and like little energies and personalities and before I started the project I thought you know what this is going to be like how am I going to come up with like 30 different ways to paint cats <laughs> <laughs> and then about three quarters of the way in, I'm like, there's an infinite number of like magical cats in this world that I'm discovering <laughs> like every day. I'm like, oh, who's this? Who's this? Um, yeah, so kind of organically from that, like I was seeing like, oh, and people were like, this kind of reminds me of an inspiration deck. And I love tarot. I love Oracle. Deck. I've always, I've had those since I was a teenager. Yeah. And so... You know, I'm like, it, it does seem like that's happening. Um, and then there was a point, probably like maybe six months to a year after Month of Cats, where I fully committed to like fleshing it out into the deck and like painting more of them and 
really and like working on everything that I had written and like fleshing it out more. So there was a moment where like it became what it was and I just fully committed, but the beginning was super organic and intuitive <laughs> and unplanned in a way. Yeah, no, I, I love that because it, again, it speaks so much to just um, what I see in this art is very much that like it was intuitive. It started as this um, project, passion project. I love that you put that word, those words to it. Um, and then just this, you know, infinite magical cats in the world. I'm like, you're right, because no <laughs> two of these cats look the same and they all have these very different personalities and energies. And I just, I cannot gush about this deck enough. Let me just say, <laughs> um, so segue that, segue us a little bit into um, the work you do when you paint for people, remind, uh, soul, soul portraits that you do mm -hmm. for people. Mm -hmm. Talk a little bit about that because I think it's such a unique offering that you have for the world. And I don't even know if people necessarily know that this kind of thing can exist in the world. And right. so, I, yeah, <laughs> so I wanna hear you share, yeah. share and talk a little bit about what, what they are, how you, what your process is for doing that. Yeah, so I call them soul prints. And basically the idea is that they're an intuitive portrait of, of someone's inner self. Um, and I love that. Like I love, one of my main um, sort of motivators to create art is I feel like it's this amazing way to connect on a deep level with people. It's like you're reaching out through your art and they're meeting you and there's this beautiful connection. And through that, I was thinking, wow, like there could be like this amazing collaboration that could happen with me and someone. So what I do is we usually open it, open up the soul print process um, through um, a conversation or we either do it verbally or written. And it's like all of these type, all of all these questions, like some of them are really deep questions and some of them are very playful and kind of like, you know, what's your favorite animal or what, you know, there's like, if you could travel anywhere in the world, like some of them are really playful like that. And then some of them are much deeper um, mm -hmm. and uh, kind of are more like self reflection. Mm -hmm. And I take all of that, like that moment of connection that I have with that person, that moment of seeing them. And then from there, um, I go into a meditative, intuitive, intuitive channeling state. So it looks like a meditation on the outside. Um, and I've done, done intuitive channeling for many years. Um, I think I've, I guess it's probably been about like 12 years now that I've done intuitive channeling. So um, I use it all the time, like in my business to help people, like help friends and family and and this is another way that I started using it. I mean, I used it to create the deck, like <laughs> right. have like my, <laughs> my, my guides are helping me out. Um, so, and then in that process, I asked to see um, an image of that person's soul. So it can come to me in different forms. Like a lot of times it will be, um, the most recent ones I've done have always been of people but they are like very magical and different and they have like such a unique feeling. Like it really is like a unique imprint for each person. Mm. And to me, it's like this amazing experience when I'm um, in the channeling state. Cause I feel like this energy of a person just come to me so strongly mm. um, and like meet me in that, you know, interesting like inner space. <laughs> And I really feel their energy is so amazing. And so then I translate that vision that I have to a painting. Um, and then the, the person gets that painting. And I also write to them um, a letter um, explaining some of the symbolism um, also that was in the painting or messages that came through to me mm -hmm. um, to them. Um, but the idea is like, reflecting someone's true inner beauty and uniqueness their imprint back to them because mm -hmm. um, so i think sometimes it's easy to feel like you know to get down on ourselves or to kind of like feel um like we get away from our center and this soul print is meant to be uh like a touchstone like something you can come back to and like connect to your deepest self and have someone 
you know, reflect that back to you. Like, I saw this in you. Like, I see this in you. This is part of who you are. And I think it can really, like, uplift people and strengthen them and help, help them, um, you know, in moments where maybe they're not feeling fully connected to that. Like, it can be like a reconnect moment. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's been, I really, the, the ones that I've done, like, I've absolutely loved doing. Like, it's so, it's just, like, so magical. <laughs> like, yeah. I'm like, it sounds like a magical process. Like even the, I would imagine that even the prompts, the questions are, you know, causing a person to be more introspective and even having to take a moment to, you know, have some playful responses or go a little deeper and more serious. Um, yeah. I love that they're called soul prints. It just immediately makes me think fingerprints. We all have a unique one. Soul prints. Of course we would have a unique one, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. That's a beautiful, beautiful name. And when you do that process, the final product that a person gets, is it canvas? Is it on paper? Is it, how do you? The ones that I do are all um, watercolor paintings. Mm -hmm. um, so they're usually uh, eight by 10 watercolor paintings like on really high quality arches paper. Mm -hmm. um, so they're usually, people usually frame them after. Um, but yeah, that's, it's, it's I've even had um, people that actually give them as gifts to someone, which is like the whole process is like a gift. Um, mm -hmm. Usually like uh, people who are like close or family, like close family, like mothers to daughters or daughters mm -hmm. to mothers. <laughs> like it's kind of both of those <laughs> variations. <laughs> but yeah, so that's kind of interesting too. Like, you know, in that format. And actually one of the things that really, you know, I thought was like so sweet was one of them that I did um, for this woman, her mother saw it and was like, oh my God, this is you. This is so you. Like, okay, if her mother sees it and like can see that, like, yeah, like, the magic has happened. <laughs> yeah, like, that is. Okay. <laughs> I was going to say, mamas, the mamas know us. So. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So that's, that is, that's pretty validating. That's, that's beautiful. <laughs> so yeah, soul prints. I love that. And so, okay, tell us a little bit about your what does a day in your life look like what does a day in your art artsy life look like yeah so um different days look different ways um so i would say i usually have like every day has some creative time um either like either painting um physically for like stories or um you know one of these commissions like i do kitty commissions too which are also really fun <laughs> fun to paint little cats now that I'm addicted to it. <laughs> so you get to paint other people's cats, like they send you a picture I, of your cat. And yeah, cool. yeah, I get to paint other people's cats, which is like so fun. And, you know, I make them very mad. Like they're, they have a little magical touch to them too, oh, just like the, in the cards. Um, so sometimes I'm working on a commission. Sometimes I'm working on, um, I have a children's book agent. So sometimes I'm working on um, like that, work like for that portfolio and for uh like future book projects mm -hmm. um and then sometimes i'm working on um other like client work which is like mostly what i do for client work is stuff that goes on it's like artwork that goes on to products so like mm -hmm. greeting cards and um like home deck things uh wall art like all sorts of stuff like that so there's um and women's clothing too i, I have do some women's clothing um, prints and stuff. So either I'm painting or I'm like digitally creating things. I work on the computer too. I have like my pen, <laughs> my Wacom tablet and pen. So still, sometimes I digitally create things. Right. Um, and then there's always like time, like also spent like connecting, you know, doing online stuff. So like connecting, I love Instagram. Like that's my spot. So like, I try to post as often as possible. Mm -hmm. I would say I post every day, but I know that that's like not <laughs> actually every day. <laughs> yeah, like, I try every day. I really do. <laughs> I try to post a lot, which I do post a lot. It's not always every day, but, um, and then, you know, I write too. So um, sometimes I'll spend time writing. Um, usually like I don't work on more than two creative projects in one day. Like I don't li like ideally, and I'm learning more and more about myself since I have to like schedule my own time. Mm -hmm. I don't really like like 
switching, like some people love like switching up, like switching up from different paintings or like switching up from different um, projects. But I love like longer spans of time, like working on one thing. Yeah. So I try to like s schedule it like that so that I, if I'm working on a project, I can spend like five or six hours just like working on that straight. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so that's, yeah, there's, and then there's some time spent doing like logistical stuff, like packing up kitty cat, like kitty decks and shipping them out and <laughs> all of that stuff. Yeah. So do you, um, I, I felt like I heard a little cat bell, bell walking around yes. in there. Do you have a kitty yourself? I do. Well, that's actually a funny story because like I did not have a cat before I painted cats for 30 days. Oh, wow. And after 30 days. Um, a friend of mine, so I painted cats every single day for 30 days. Within two weeks of that, um, a friend, so their neighbor, like, left. Like, they moved away or something. They were no longer in the apartment. and They left. They abandoned a kitten. Oh. And so they took it in, but they couldn't, like, keep another pet because they already had, like, quite a few animals. Mm -hmm. So they're like, do you think you can just, like, take care of her for a little bit? We're, like, going to figure something out. And I was, so I thought I was just like temporarily taking care of her, but of course, like, <laughs> here and I was like, oh, like, I, and I'm like, can you paint anything for 30 days and then it just like appears at your door? Like, is that, like, is that how manifestation works? Like, <laughs> let's, see, let's test that out. <laughs> you know? But in this case, you know, and she, it was like really just like the perfect timing and she's actually in the deck. Like, mm -hmm. I put her in the deck, like, I painted her and put her in the deck. Oh, that's perfect. I <laughs> yeah, love um, yeah, she was, like, a little savior for me, too, because at that time, um, my husband was out of the country for, like, almost a year, so mm -hmm. I was, like, really needed that healing energy, especially at night, and, yeah, she just came in and was, like, let me take your anxiety away and replace it with fuzziness. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Magical fuzziness. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> That's perfect, though. That is, that's actually a really great story because it does kind of speak to the idea of manifesting, right? Mm -hmm. And it yeah. also speaks to just the, it's what you needed. Like, you're like, why are these cats showing up? I don't usually draw cats. Like, where are these cats coming, right? And so you were drawing, there was some, there's some cat energy that you did need in, in your life. Um, I did. <laughs> but, yeah. So I love that. I think that's very, very that's like a great story, seriously. Yeah. <laughs> um, so tell us a little, you've talked a little bit about, you know, classes and taking class. What do you, what do you teach and where do you like compete? How can people um, learn from you and be, you know, in community with you? In what ways can they do that? Yeah, well, one super easy way um, is that I usually teach um, a free tarot and oracle card course called Vision Seeker. Mm -hmm. And that's actually starting on February 13th. And I run it like uh, two times a year usually. Um, so we have one coming up and it's, I, it's like such an amazing journey. It's 13 days and there's three um, audio, there's guided meditations, three audio guided meditations. There's like journal prompts. Um, there's card spreads to, to play with and then like it's literally taking you through this this journey of self-discovery and like finding your vision mm. um, and making decisions and kind of getting in touch with yourself so you, once you have this structure you can actually like keep it and implement it whenever you're feeling like like in the woods in the forest like where am I going <laughs> you're like I am to like vision seek yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And so you can use it again. And right. actually, it's a great um, thing to use with for people who are journal because it's um, like each day would really uh, work well with like journaling. And there's some creative prompts, like creative exercises too. So, mm -hmm. you know, bringing those two together, I think would be pretty um, seamless. So, and it's yeah. a free, free course. And I just offer it to give people a chance to like learn how to interact with my spirit cats deck, um, but also like any deck, like you can use tarot. It's not just for my deck, but you know, that's part of the reason why I created it was to introduce people to what is possible in terms of working with the deck. Um, so yeah, that's, that's one of the, the main free things that I have going on that I, I love to share with people. And we have a fun community of people that share what they've 
found and discovered and made through the course on Instagram too. So that's mm -hmm. kind of so it so it's actually perfect timing, right? Because it's a great we um, Nicole's teaching in the whole pen paint class that we have coming up. And this class is like going to be awesome for the students who've already signed up for PPP. They can take this as a way to get them ready for it. So I can't wait to share that with them. And then all of you who are listening, we're right now in February 2017. So the class starts February 13th, 2017. Um, but I, I happen to know that Nicole has run this class multiple times. So you it may come around again if you are hearing this well after um, mm -hmm. February 13th, 2017. So just check our website. All the links will be below for you to, to check out. Yeah, so yeah I definitely like, I definitely want to run it again. And also if people are like a few days late to sign up, they'll still like receive the course, the course in the order. So even if they're oh. three late, they still can kind of <laughs> sneak in. Good. 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 That's good to know. I'm glad you said that. Cause like, yeah. I'm, all, I'm not like a very strict teacher. <laughs> Awesome. That is good. Um, and Nicole, I know for, for a fact she's taught in two of the classes that I, collaborative courses that I put together, but are there any other um, things that, ways that you want people to come and connect with you? Um, the other, um, the other offering that is new that I have is actually, um, I work with people one-on-one, -on -one to me, and especially it's for visual artists, um, and I call them vision sessions, and <laughs> There, this is something that I felt like I needed and never found, but then made it through, and now I can like offer it, like made it through that those challenges, and now can offer it to other people. Um, but it's really to help artists um, if they are trying to find their style, find their voice, find their vision, um, to help them along that path. Because sometimes you really need an out an external eye to like look at it and see the thread that pulls through everything um, and then also from there like finding where your audience is for that specific style and voice like where your audience is if you want you, there's no pressure to monetize it but if you want to you know how to build an audience and where it would where your art what would best fit like, I've worked in the fine art world and art galleries and art licensing and, and you know, in, intuitive, creative art. Like, it's like I've done, I've sort of like traveled <laughs> through the different areas of, the whole circle of art tonight. and business. So I know, I know a lot of the different Yeah. 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 <laughs> like, I, I know that. the art world map. <laughs> I love that you are doing that. That is I can't even tell you, you are such the perfect person to be doing that. Today. <laughs> no, seriously, like guiding people through, and I love that they're called vision sessions because um, I don't know if you remember this, but there was a, a little workshop you did. It was like a, a full day thing. It was on Spreecast. I can't remember the exact name yes. at the time, but it was very much kind of what you're describing here in terms of um, helping us. I think you were helping us like remove some of the negative self-talk, right? You were. Yeah, yeah. it was a the inner critic. <laughs> yes. And it was, oh my gosh, I created, I wish I had it in front of me right now. It's probably over there somewhere, but I had, I created just from that process, listening to you and the whole, I actually left that session with a handmade book that I yeah. Yeah, I remember that. The, yeah. yeah. And it was, I'm like, that's perfect because it, I, I see you as somebody who can do that for people, like can help people really tap into what is the what is the thing that is really your creative outlet that is really your style and even at the end of that like that wasn't a book I went in saying oh I'm gonna make this book while I'm working with Nicole it that's just what came out as we were working right. you know as everybody yeah. was working together for that session so I love that you're doing that that is yeah, really it's a fun, fun way and the ones that I've done it's been super inspiring and it's just I think it's a really great way to like help people to remove um obstacles that they might be facing but like the obstacles that stop us from creating with consistency that stop us from having confidence in our work um you know it's like I think because I've worked through all of these things myself, I've like developed tools. Like I know how hard it is to start sometimes. I know how hard it is to finish. And I've like learned how to defeat those demons. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? <laughs> Maybe I, I might need to get a vision session. Because, um, I have no problem starting. 
the finishing. I just don't. I'm, I'm like, oh, okay, I'm going to move on to the next thing. Oh, yeah. Right? Oh, my God. Usually, it's like one of those, one of those sides always gets someone. Like yeah. the starting and the finishing. Oh, I can start like a thousand things. You know, maybe two of them will be finished. I don't know. Well, my, my best friend has a really hard time starting. And my hardest part, I mean, she has a really hard time finishing. And my hardest part is starting. So mm -hmm. I'm like, well, if you could just squish this into one. <laughs> things all over the place yeah. <laughs> I love that you're offering that seriously so those of you out there that are you know in your art space and you're you're because we all have that moment where we waver between is this really what I'm supposed to be doing um, why can't I seem to finish anything or why do I have such a hard time starting or why does my art not look like that person's art I've been doing this just as long right we all have that inner critic who is like sometimes on overdrive yes um, so, and it helps to have a sort of third party objective, right? You being the first party, that inner critic being the second, and then the third person like Nicole, <laughs> who can say, okay, inner critic, let's give you something else to do while the two of yeah. us work on this. Yeah, day. totally. <laughs> yeah, and then use some, um, I actually like use the intuitive channeling as part of it, because I feel like that really helps to like cut through um, sort of like what our distractions are and like what we think we should be doing versus like what really is like, the heart's desire mm -hmm. um so yeah i love like bringing that into it too so it's not just me like analyzing and kind of right. um making a plan it's really about bringing using intuition to like bring that forth from the person that i'm working with so yeah that's yeah. beautiful <laughs> so then let's um let's shift gears for a second because we're gonna we're gonna wrap this part of our conversation up um for those of you listening in on youtube here um we are like I said, we're running this course, full pen paint um, journaling with tarot and oracle cards. And so we've gathered a bunch of teachers. So not just me and Nicole, there's a bunch of us um, all working together and from different walks of life, different areas of art, different areas of tarot, creating debt creators to people who are um, just using tarot in their, in their lives and in their businesses. Um, and we're coming together and we're going to do some journaling. We're going to pull cards. We're going to do journaling. We're going to make art. Um, I'm really excited about this class. I can't even tell you. So um, those of you that are listening, we, we're going to talk a couple more. I'm going to ask Nicole a couple more questions about her art practice. And then we're going to shift and she and I are going to go off into another little segment that will only be available for the students who are taking the class where we actually talk about her deck and the creation of the deck and the you know steps she took to get this into the world so um, if you're interested in that part of the conversation come join us in the class it's a month-long class we've got lots of stuff happening there so um, I'll make sure you have all the stuff you need down below to find out more so Nicole before we wrap up I want you to uh, tell us some of your favorite art supplies because you know folks Folks love to hear about art supplies. I love to hear about art supplies. <laughs> totally. Okay, so my like go-to uh, absolute favorites are these are my watercolors and mm. Ooh, they're yummy. They're white nights watercolors actually from Russia. My friend's Russian and she brought them over, but you can get them online too. Mm. Um, but they're like the pigment is so rich. It's like some people even ask me like is this watercolor that you're painting with i'm like yes this is watercolor but it just like comes out so much richer than other pig i think it's just a really dense pigment in the paint um and yeah i really and i also love that it's not in tubes you, i used to only use tubes and it was like i was constantly like should i put out like some of all of these colors like I always felt like it was like I was trying to decide which ones to put out am I putting out too much and now they're like all out all the time and I'm like <laughs> <"Free."> <laughs> so and these are the brushes that I use these are my three they're sable brushes so yeah I, lo I like I try not to use, like I actually like keeping things simple so just having the three like I think when I have less sometimes I get really familiar with it Mm -hmm. um, like I really know it like I when I have too many brushes like I don't remember what they all feel like and how they all act mm -hmm. um, so I like to kind of pare down to like so I really know like what that brush does when I use it mm -hmm. uh, and then I have these which is super fun these are also watercolors but they're metallics they're also the same company and these are like crazy fun to use because they're sparkly <laughs> and there's like <laughs> 
copper, like in this painting, you can see a little like, there's like copper and gold and wow. silver. Yeah, so it's like super fun. Um, and I also use this a fair amount. It's um, called Dollar Roni Acrylic Artist Ink. Mm -hmm. and so I use that when I want to do like in this one you can see like the little white like stars so when I want to go in and add like little white details after in the watercolor like I'll use this ink to kind of um, put those pieces in and on the other like standard one I use is this invisible liquid mask liquid frisket Mm -hmm. And this is, you use it to, um, if you paint it on first, mm -hmm. it really messes up the brush. So you use a really crappy brush. If you're <laughs> use it. But you can basically block on an area that you don't want the watercolor to go on. And then you can paint over it. So it can leave like little white detail. Like if you know that you're going to have a dark sky, but there's going to be a few really light details. It's, sometimes it's easier, especially if they're small to you know add them in first if it's like a bigger area it's easy, you know you can kind of go around it but if it's like a million little things you're gonna be sad if you're going around it right. um, yeah so those are my main like painting art supplies that i use like every single day and like love them <laughs> oh, no, that, that's great the, so the watercolors were called the white knight russian Right. Yeah, they're they're white. They're called White Knights, mm -hmm. and it's um, a Russian brand. Okay. And they come. You can get like a set like this, but they come in little blocks individually too that are just like wrapped up like, you know, yellow okra or whatever, just the color. Nice. Um, individually as well. Nice, nice, yeah. awesome. We'll we'll make sure folks have the link down yeah. below. Um, they can get to those because. I'm always looking for like some highly pigmented ones because I do. I look at other people's. I'm like why are my colors so muted? Am I using too much water? What's happening here? But I do think it's the paint. The paint matters, which paints you're using. It matters so much. Like I, um, I, I do some oil painting as well. And I've actually like made my own oil paints before. And it's the same thing. It's like all about like the pig, like if you have a good pigment and there's not a lot of filler, whether it's like acrylic or oil or watercolor, it's just going to be like, you don't need as much paint. Like it's more expensive first but it's like less expensive long term because you're not like struggling to get like the color density that you want. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah. yes. Awesome. Okay so then um, for our last question as we um, as we wrap up here because you've kind of answered everything. You talked about what inspires your art. You talked about um, well here's one thing. What other kinds of art do you do? Like do you knit? Do you sew? Do you have any other art creative outlets? But besides illustration and watercolor art? Yeah, so I'm not really a crafty person, so I definitely like have very few, I have like sewn a few like really crazy costumes that are more like sculptural, <laughs> <laughs> um, but I wouldn't say that that's something I do like regularly, that's like every couple of years. Um, mm -hmm. but the, my main other creative outlet is actually dance. I knew um, you were going to say dance. Yeah. yeah, I love, like I, I dance almost every single day, like I I grew up dancing, I used to be in a ballet company in modern dance when I was younger. And for me, it's like this, cre I love like improvised dance where you're just sort of making it up as you go, like ecstatic dance. And I love that like you're creating something in the moment and it just is what it is. And then it band like this ephemeral, sensual, physical quality. It's like non-thought. <laughs> like there's yeah. like no like I love entering that space because it's such a good like I'm I can be a very analytical person like I'm creative but I can also be super analytical and like mm -hmm. I think it just helps me get into this like place beyond thought and just pure experience like pure creativity and it just happens and disappears and yeah I love and like just being in my body like it keeps me less crazy <laughs> keeps me grounded like I'm like stay in the physical world don't like float off into the ether like I mean I have you know I'm very dreamy so I need to like stay in my body do things to stay grounded too yeah. so yeah um, like I do all sorts of dance now like I love going to Zumba and I do Lindy Hop and swing dancing and oh my god Lindy Hop that's so cute I yeah love it. I get to dress vintage and like work dresses <laughs> You know, working at home all day, and then I like can be like, "Oh, I'm like in this cute dress with makeup and twirling." Yeah. <laughs> perfect. That is perfect. I love it, Nicole. I think um, 
this has been a very refreshing jumpstart back into doing these interviews. Um, I took a little bit of a hiatus off at the end of the uh, end of the year last year, and so I am so happy to start 2017 with you as my first Hala Art Journal um, interviewee because this has been so. It just reminds me why I do this work, um, why I have these interviews, and why I talk to other creatives about their life and what how they make a creative life for themselves because. I want to just, I want people to know it's possible, no matter what your situation is, no matter what your life kind of looks like, the craziness of it, the hecticness of it, there's still a way to find art and bring art and creativity into your life, even if you don't do art, right? Even if it's whatever your creative outlet is, there's ways to bring it into your world. So thank you so much for sharing with us your creative life, your process, um, and just what what create what we can do if we just allow our imaginations to, to lead our hearts and our imaginations. So, thank you. Well, thank you. This is amazing. I loved I love being here and talking with everyone and talking with you. So Yay. thanks so much. Thank you. All right. We'll see you guys. We're signing off. Bye. <laughs>